Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to try and answer a question which is really the reason I have a job. Folks come to me to really answer the question, do I have enough? And so today I want to help you work out how much is enough? Enough what? Enough to retire, enough to be able to make work optional and maybe enough to drive a cool car like mine. <laughs> not that cool, not really. Gosh, so many stairs. If you're new here, my name is Pete Matthew. I'm a Chartered Financial Planner. I've been putting up content here on YouTube for more than 10 years, giving you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. I'm gonna need to take just five minutes to get my breath back, so I'll set up the big camera and speak to you in just a sec. Don't forget, this video continues to be sponsored by Seven Investment Management, who have been helping me out on here for ages. Check out what they're up to and say thank you at 7im.co.uk. Weird lighting. Okay, we're finally ready to begin. So, what does it mean to have enough? No matter what stage of life you're at, Financial planning comes down to income and outgoings. It's as simple as that. But in retirement, most of us have less coming in than we're used to having. We're no longer earning a salary or running our business. So what incomes might we have coming in instead of those things? Well, most of us will get the state pension, but not till at least 65 and likely later than that for most of us. For me, it'll be 67. That could easily get pushed back again before I get there. Uh, we might have final salary or defined benefit pensions from our workplace if we're lucky, especially if you work in the public sector or maybe for a larger long-standing company. We might also have rental income from a buy-to-let property or two, and maybe, maybe we will do some paid work just to keep our hand in. These are all income sources, but chances are they won't be enough to cover our desired lifestyle that we'd like in retirement. And if our outgoings exceed our income, we're gonna to need to make up the difference from somewhere. And that is why we save and invest throughout life, building up assets to make up that difference. When the value of those assets are sufficient to last the rest of our lives, that's when we truly have enough. But hang on, there are a ton of variables involved here. How long are you gonna live? None of us knows the answer to that question. Is the income that you get in retirement, is it gonna rise or stay level? In which case, if it stays level, it'll buy you less and less each year, thanks to inflation. How will the money that you've got invested grow? Don't investments go down as well as up? With all these moving parts, how on earth can we arrive at a value, a number, for the assets that we will need to see us through retirement? Well, the further away from retirement you are, the more woolly this is gonna be. And so we use rules of thumb to help us, like the 4% rule. Now this rule, which isn't really a rule at all, says that you should be able to draw 4% of the value of your portfolio value each year, and it'll last the rest of your life. In that case, you need to work out what you're gonna need in one year to make up the difference between your income and your outgoings, and then multiply that figure by 25. So let's first work out what we're gonna need in one year. First, we need to identify the income coming in and we need to do this assuming that we're retiring now, having worked as long as we plan to. I know that's difficult to get your head around. So if you're 40 now and you'd like to retire at 60, we're gonna to need to do these sums imagining that we've worked for another 20 years. So think about that. If you've worked another 20 years, chances are you'll have a full state pension. Now, as I record this in the middle of 2021, the state pension is 9,339 pounds per year. Maybe you have a rental property bringing in 500 pounds a month after costs. That's another 6,000 pounds a year of income. If you're lucky enough to have a DB pension scheme, 
then you'll need to ask what you're likely to get from that scheme if you were to work and remain in the scheme until age 60. And the pension department at work should be able to provide that figure for you. But make sure it's in today's money, right? That's really important. We can only work in today's money. So let's say the figure from that pension comes to £9,661 per year. Well, conveniently, that adds up to £25,000 a year in income. Now, let's say that in order to have a great retirement lifestyle, you want to spend £36,000 a year or £3,000 a month. Well, the shortfall between that expenditure that you desire and the income we just added up is £11,000. So if we use our 4% rule, we take £11,000, multiply it by 25, and we get a figure of £275,000. So that, folks, that is your number. Now, for more help with all of this, there is no better place than Meaningful Academy Retirement Planning, which is gonna be launching on July the 12th, 2021 with special launch pricing. There are video lessons, calculators, worksheets. Best of all though, you get access to Voyant Go, which is the most powerful financial planning software in the world, and I'll even teach you how to use it. In short, Meaningful Academy is the best place I know to plan your retirement effectively. So head over to MeaningfulAcademy.com slash Pete is handsome to find out more. You'll remember that link, won't you? Okay, we've established the fairly simple maths to arrive at a number, and it is simple. But let's just recap things. You take your expected income at retirement, expressed in today's money, then add up your expenses, assuming that you've paid off your mortgage if you have one, and you come up with a desired lifestyle cost. Take your income off your expenses to identify a shortfall. Multiply that number by 25 to get your number. Now chances are it's quite a big number, but maybe it's less than you think. A great deal depends on where you are in your journey. If you've been saving and investing for quite a few years already, it might be that you're already well on your way to attaining that number. But how do you get from where you are now to achieving that magic number? Well, I wish there was a shortcut, but the only way is to pay yourself first, put money aside every month and invest intelligently. Now I have a calculator on the website. I'll put a link in the description below. And the calculator will help you work out how much you need to save every year between now and your chosen FI or financial independence age. Once you know how much you have to save each year, there are a couple of things you can do to get there as efficiently as possible. Firstly, use all the tax breaks you can. Pensions are best for this. You get free money from the government and if you're employed, from your boss as well. So definitely put all that free money to good use. If you're under age 40, open a lifetime ISA and try and pay the maximum into that because this also comes with a bonus from HMRC, as long as you only use the money to buy your first home or as we're talking about today, retirement after age 60. Make sure you invest fairly aggressively with a high allocation to shares. It'll be a rocky road for sure, but the growth will follow given enough time. And I've got tons of stuff about investing on the channel, on the website, at Meaningful Academy. Now, if you've used the calculator and realize that you can't afford to save what you need each year or each month, that's okay, right? You've got to start with what you can afford and then work up from there. So that means you've got to find a figure that's manageable for you, slightly uncomfortable though, to save and invest each month. And then commit to reviewing that figure after three months. Try to put it up, even if it's only by five pounds or 10 pounds a month. Make sure you do that review every three months, even if sometimes you just can't push your savings rate any further. Also, commit to saving the majority of any pay rises or bonuses that you receive. Don't let lifestyle creep get in the way and rob you of your future. And once a year, recalculate. Do the sums to work out your number again. Maybe it's gone up because you realize you wanna spend more in retirement. Or maybe actually you realize you can get by on less and so the magic number comes down. Maybe even your retirement age can come down for the same reason. So working out your retirement number is always a moving feast. The variables change, there's tons of moving parts, but it's addictive, it's a lot of fun. Working towards this ultimate goal really is exciting, challenging, sometimes a little bit disheartening, but always worthwhile. So tell me, what's your number? Maybe let me know in the comments. 
Okay, I hope it was helpful. Don't forget the calculator on the website to help you with your sums to come up with your number. And don't forget the upcoming launch of the retirement planning phase of Meaningful Academy. Links to both those things in the description below the video. And if it's been helpful, folks, please, please, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps. So thank you in advance for doing that and I will see you in the next video.